Blessings, everyone. All right, I'm not going to do any talking here. I'm just going to play this video that I found last night. I think it's really uh, something for all of us to hear. Um, it's unavailable, the original video. So um, I'll leave everything in the description box, okay? So I would like to uh, thank Drew Bloom for this. This was, I believe, published in 2016. But here we go. Is the 20th of December, 2016. Yes. We are continuing, or I should say I am continuing, my expose of what I would easily call the most dangerous man on YouTube when it comes to a person being in a position, or at least a teaching capacity, who's teaching so falsely and so wrongly on the Word of God. Now, for those of you who oppose me in what I'm doing, I would ask that you would just stick around to the end to listen to what I have to say about this man, because, again, in my opinion, the most dangerous when it comes to interpreting Scripture to make it fit into his agenda. Very, very wrong. I would ordinarily call it childlike, but then that would be an insult to children. For children, in fact, have a better understanding of Scripture than this man right here. So we're going to take a listen to a couple of clips, and we're going to refute this man in context. And, of course, we'll be referring to our strongest concordance. But first, we'll listen to what uh, his agenda is and how he interprets Scripture to make it fit into his demon seed or lizard seed conspiracy that he's trying to push on everyone. And again, I tell you that this is a tactic to get you off Scripture and into his line of research, which includes vaginas, penises, and sperm. And I know that may be a little hard for some people to hear, but this is what this man is doing. So let's give a listen to the first clip. It's so upset. Okay, so I want to show you something and just get ready. So Matthew 13, 30, 24 is where it starts. And another parable he put forth unto them, saying the kingdom of heaven is like an unto man which sowed good seed. Somebody tell me what the word seed is. Just tell me. Am I seeing sperm because I want to? Or am I seeing yes. the word sperma because that's what the Bible says? That's what the translation of the word seed is. Let's see. There you go. It's even what the word means when it's translated sperma. There. I mean, you know, did I make that up? Oh, no. I clicked on the word seed. What is the mean? So we, in fact, see that he didn't make it up, that the Greek word is G4690. But here's where the trick comes in. It's in the context that he's teaching it to you. He's trying to promote that this whole parable that Jesus told is about the serpent seed, sperm. This is what he's trying to do. And I would say that in doing this, he's got his followers off the actual context and meaning of this parable and into a witch hunt for the devil coming in and having sex with Eve and sowing his sperm into the DNA of mankind which is psycho. But here's what it does. It takes you away from the truth of Christ and what he's saying. And therefore, he has succeeded in doing what it is that he's doing, teaching a false doctrine by manipulating and twisting Scripture into a false, laughably false doctrine. So now we're going to show you something. If you come over to the Blue Letter Bible, we're looking at the same paragraph here. Here it is, G4690. And we click on this. Immediately you will see that indeed the word is sperma. But as we scroll down to get the definition, it says, from which a plant germinates. The seed, i.e., the grain or kernel which contains within itself 
the germ of the future plants. And then, of course, down here it can also be used to the product of his semen, seed, children, offspring. As a confirmation, we can come up here and we can also click on right here where it says issue, another example of where this was used before. And we read, of course, in the story uh, when there were seven brethren in the first and when he had married a wife deceased and it goes on, having no issue, meaning having no seed, it's used in this context. So we can see where it would be used in both stories. Here it's talking about the seed of man. But as we go back to Matthew, here in the King James Bible, Matthew chapter 13, here is the verse. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed, right here, in his field. Now, using context... Because this Greek word is used in both examples, the only thing we have to do is determine what is he talking about. Is he talking about actual sperm, or is he talking about the seed of something like a plant? So context, we read what he's talking about before, and if necessary, after. Now if you scroll up to verse 19, it tells you very clearly. When anyone heareth the word, right, of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. He's talking about being sown into your heart. This is he which received the seed. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is context. To know that this parable which Jonathan would have you believe is an actual story of Jesus uh, talking about Satan coming in and sowing sperm into a female is ridiculous. This right here will tell you the context in which this parable is being told. The parable goes on to say that but he that receiveth the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word. Again, massively confirmed within this parable what it is that Jesus is talking about. And I can tell you perverts out there who want so badly to believe Jonathan Cleck that he is not, Jesus is not talking about serpent seed for crying out loud. Pause for dramatic silence. <laughs> My goodness. Now, for further confirmation, we'll listen to another clip just to see how ridiculous, when you put it in context, how ridiculous this would sound. Sperm. Okay, so the kingdom of heaven is like an unto man would sow good sperma seed in his field. But what Sowing sperma seed in his field. What does this mean, that men are ejaculating into fields? I suppose he would say field would represent a vagina. Well, let's check that out. So now I remember, in order to make this whole parable line up, this would have to represent the woman's vagina, G68. So we click on it, and it brings up the Greek word agros. So we scroll down to see what this means. Well, it doesn't say vagina. The field, the country, a piece of land, a bit of tillage, farms, country seats, neighbor, neighboring hamlets. No vaginas here. Sorry, Jonathan. In everything you said, it's completely false. Less than a child's understanding. But then again, it fits into your agenda of pushing a false doctrine onto the believers, sending them on wild goose chases and scavenger hunts, getting them away from the truth of Scripture. So I've already, because he's in delusion and because he is a reprobate, and because when he hears from familiar spirits, he probably actually believes that this is God talking to him, having no clue whatsoever. I do know the living word. It lives in me. Doesn't? 
And that's why I'm able to show you supernatural stuff. That's right. why I'm able to lay hands on people that are blind. Really? And have their sight recover immediately. Okay. Uh, in my presence. And that's why they did. Did you hear what he said there? In my presence. Now, any lover of Christ who, if they actually did have these gifts, would be giving glory to Christ. They would not utter things like, in my presence. My presence, really? My presence, bandana head? No. It's the glory is Christ's to this guy. A confirmed false prophet testifying of himself. Absolutely astonishing. Now, some of you know that I did a video a couple of days ago about his clothing tag, his nylon. He mentions this so much. I wonder why. Here he is again. The night I got saved. The very first thing the Lord God showed me in a hotel room was 100% no lying. If I wanted to know the truth, I couldn't tell 1% lying in my life, and I quit lying. Never the <laughs> he says he quit lying. i got to do that again. Now, for those of you who don't know, part of his testimony is that our holy God, filled with power and glory, told him as a confirmation to turn his surfer shirt clothing tag upside down, which said 100% nylon. And God revealed him. <laughs> also, don't forget, no nylon meat. It could also be lion, no Jesus. And didn't he just do a video here where Rihanna and all of them have that shh on the figure meaning kill Jesus or something to that effect? No Jesus, no lion, no lion of Judah. Revealed to him an answer which said, no lion. As in his backward, upside-down life, Jonathan Cleft, you know, he does all this, uh, read the word nylon backwards, and it said, no lion. As if God was saying, yes, Jonathan, your testimony is true. I am no lying. I'm not lying. Um, which is just so laughable. It's amazing. So now we're going to wrap this video up, at least these clips, this intentionally. But again, ruling with fear, just like Muhammad. Uh, listen to what he says here. So uh, you just called me a liar and a false teacher, which is really scary. Because uh, you better start praying that I am, Joseph. Because if I'm not, then you just bought yourself a ticket to the pit. Can you wow. believe that? Trying to wield God as a weapon. By telling anybody who calls him a false prophet that they are now unforgivable, and as he said, they bought a ticket to the pit, lost forever in eternity. You were not even close, Captain Upside Down. You've led thousands astray with your ridiculous doctrine, perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I don't call down eternal death on you. I paint a scenario that's a possibility. And right now you are on that path. But you can be forgiven, Jonathan. You have not committed the unforgivable sin if you repent. And that is in the word of God.